Hello everyone and welcome to today's yoga class. Today we'll be doing a Mark Stevens sequence. So normally when I teach yoga, I kind of create my own little flow, little sequence, but I wanted to do something a little special and use one of my teacher's sequences. His name is Mark Stevens, if you haven't heard of him. He is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Really, really well versed in safety alignment and especially for yoga teachers, uh, adjustments, hands on adjustments. And I was lucky enough to train with him for one of his workshops on adjustments. And I just have all of his books. So he actually wrote a book on sequencing. So if you're a yoga teacher and you were interested in checking that book out, I'll put a link in the description. And today is sequence number six. If anyone does have the book and cares to have a peek, we should get started. We'll get started. Just thinking, do we need any supplies? It's always nice when you're at home, just have all of your supplies that you have. If you have blocks or I really like a blanket and you might even want a blanket to sit on for our very first pose. Supasana. So once you're all ready to go, find yourself in a nice, comfortable seated position, cross-legged if available maybe up on a little blankie. And once you arrive, palms on the knees, lifting up nice and tall, and then close the eyes. Taking a few moments here just to arrive to your practice today. Letting go of any cares or worries, anything you don't need to hold on to right now. And reminding yourself that this time is just for you. And take the next few moments to set an intention for your practice quality or virtue that you wish to cultivate on or off the mat. Yoga has so many benefits. So just picking one of them, whether it's better sleep at night or more energy during the day, or maybe it's overall increased strength, whatever that is for you, holding onto that thought for just a moment within. Here, take a few slow, deep breaths through the nose. At the top of each inhale, take just an extra little sip of air, feeling a gentle stretch in the lungs. And at the bottom of each exhale, squeeze out that last puff of air, making room for fresh new air to enter. Taking all the time you need, but when all three deep breaths are complete, slowly blink the eyes open and we'll make our way up to hands and knees. So come on up. If you were on the blanket, you can toss it aside, but not too far. You may need it again. So come on up with your hands and knees and double check that your hands are just slightly wider than shoulders width apart, at least shoulders width apart. Preparing for Vita Lasana, cat cow tilt. So warming up the back a little bit. As we inhale, drop the belly, arch the back, and so long as it's okay on your neck, lift the chin. On the exhale, scoop the belly in, curving around through the spine, tack the tail under, and the chin. Smoothing it out now, we'll inhale, drop the belly, arch the back, lift the chin. Exhale, curving and rounding. Press the space between the shoulder blades up high to the sky. Again, inhale, drop the belly, arch the back, 
Lift the chin. Exhale, curving and rounding. Tuck the chin. Last round, inhale as we smoothly transition, arch the back. And exhale, scoop the belly in, curving and rounding. And inhale back to neutral. From here, we'll find a child's pose, sitting back onto the heels. We'll do the Uttita Balasana variation, which is Extended. So reaching the arms forward and lowering your forehead to your mat or to a block. Just a few breaths here. For our last few moments in Balasana, if that looks comfortable on your arms, keep them there. Otherwise, you can head into traditional Velasana, which is along your sides, palms facing up. Slowly one all the way up through hands and knees and we'll head into our first downward facing dog, Adamal Prakvanasana. So once again, hands are slightly wider than shoulders width apart. Tuck the toes under, feet are about hips width apart. Hips go up and back to a big V. And maybe walking it out, that first down dog. here, start to walk the feet forward all the way to the top of your mat and hang out in a forward fold. The feet are parallel, softening through the back, including the neck, relaxing here and closing the eyes because this is like optimal check out your pedicure position. We don't want to do that. So just close the eyes, feeling within. And then slowly ragdoll, one vertebra at a time, all the way up, standing. If you feel lightheaded, one palm to the forehead for a moment, and we'll get flowing. You know, if you ever do find yourself staring at your toes, thinking, I should have done something about that, just close your eyes and imagine they're all perfect. You know what I'm talking about. Don't be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Standing with the feet together, heels and toes together, standing up nice and tall in Tadasana Mountain Pose. We'll head into some classical Surya Namaskara, classical sun salutations, just to get warmed up a little bit. Let's bring the palms through heart center and then raise them all the way up, taking a few moments this first one. So if your arms need a bit of space, then feel free to step the arms apart, parallel or even wider if your shoulders need that space. If they don't, get those palms together. It's a really good stretch and strengthening exercise as we scoop the belly in. On the exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth, all the way down to Uttanasana, standing forward bend pose. Palms to shins, looking up to the horizon for Ardha Uttanasana, or flat back pose. And release. From here, we'll step the right foot back, way back. And gently lower your back knee down to your mat, untucking those toes. And sweep the arms up for Anjani Asana, low lunge pose. We'll take a few moments here, this first one. We're allowing those hips to melt down towards the floor, feeling a really nice stretch in the front of that back leg.
From here, plant the hands. We'll step the front foot back to plank pose, Palakasana. So we're talking about back toes under, knee lift up, front foot steps back. Belly scooping in for a nice strong plank. So praying for Ashtanga Pranam, eight limb salutations, lower knees, keep the hips high to the sky, lower chest and chin. Try to arch your back as much as available. It should feel upward and then release to your belly, scooping through and peel the chest off the floor for a baby cobra. Toes are pointed, legs are active, shoulders down and release. Belly scoops in, pressing up and back to a downward facing dog. We're not here long. Right foot steps forward. If you need some momentum, feel free. Otherwise, for extra challenge, try to go slow. Nose to knee first, then step the foot forward. Back knee lowers down, untuck those toes, sweep the arms. Sinking and melting into those hips, down towards the ground. Hands float down to the mat. This time back foot steps forward to meet the front foot. Heels and toes together as you look up to the horizon for flat back. And forward fold. Inhale, use your glutes to come on all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And release back to a tall mountain. Again on the other side, so inhale, arms go up. Picking up the pace just a little. On the exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth. Inhale for flat back. And exhale down this time, left foot steps back, way back, gently lower the knee, untuck the toes, sweep the arms. And Jenny in a low lunge pose, only for a nanosecond, heading down back through lunge, stepping the front foot back to plank pose. Ashtanga Pranam. So here we go, knees, chest, chin, arching the back. Scoop through to the belly, point the toes, peel the chest off the floor, so use your back body, your glutes, your toes even. And release, belly scoops in as you lift up and back to downward facing dog. This time left foot steps forward, so remember if you need momentum, feel free, otherwise try to go Nose to knee, and then step it forward. Back knee lowers, untuck those toes, sweep the arms. And Jenny Asana. Not there long. Hands float down. This time back foot steps all the way forward. Inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, use the glutes to come on all the way up, long straight spine, reaching up tall. Release to a tall mountain. Again, flowing a little bit smoother. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, use the glutes as you lower all the way down. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down right foot steps back. Lowering the knee, sweep the arms. Exhale, plant the hands. Inhale, front foot steps back. Exhale, Ashtanga Pranam, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, little cobra. And exhale, release, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward all the way to Anjaniyasana. So we're lowering that back knee, sweeping the arms. Like a dance, we come back down on an exhale, plant the hands. Inhale, back foot steps forward. <laughs> Lost the plot there for a sec. <laughs> Into flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come on all the way up, reaching up high. And exhale back to a tall mountain. Left side. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. 
exhale down left foot steps back lowering the back knee untucking those toes on an inhale we sweep the arms up exhale down back through plank knees chest chin inhale scoop through peel the chest exhale release and downward facing dog inhale left foot steps forward back knee lower sweep the arms in one foul swoop exhale hands down inhale back foot steps forward all the way to flat back exhale release inhale coming all the way up reaching up high exhale back to mountain one last time see if we can go even smoother here we go inhale arms go up exhale forward fold inhale flat back exhale down right foot steps back same exhale the knee lowers inhale arms sweep exhale hands down inhale to plank exhale knees chest chin inhale scoop through peeling the chest exhale release downward facing dog inhale right foot forward knee lowers gently sweep the arms all on the same inhale exhale hands touch the floor inhale back foot steps forward all the way to flat back still inhaling exhale forward fold inhale all the way up reaching up high and exhale to mountain this time left foot steps back and forth here we go last time last side inhale arms go up exhale forward fold inhale for flat back exhale down left foot back lowering the knee inhale arms sweep up exhale hands plant inhale step it back to plank exhale knees chest chin inhale to cobra exhale downward facing dog inhale left foot forward all the way to anjaniasana inhale 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 exhale hands down inhale back foot steps forward all the way into flat back exhale forward fold inhale all the way up reaching up high exhale to a tall mountain we'll flow right into sun cell a inhale arms go up exhale forward fold inhale flat back exhale down heading back to plank belly scoops in strong plank remember you can lower your knees for plank if you like and then lowering chaturanga inhale for cobra or up dog if that's in your practice and exhale downward facing dog five deep breaths here you can always find a child's pose if you're like carly got way too excited with all of those classical sun salutations but this time it's not my fault it's mark steven it's in the book couple more deep breaths and send the feet forward 
all the way to the top, inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high. And exhale to a tall mountain, preparing for sun B. Feet all the way together, heels and toes. We'll start with Utkatasana, powerful pose. So bend the knees deeply, sweep the arms. Remember your options for arms. You can always keep those arms apart, but if you don't need to, get them together, palms pressing together. On the exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, back through plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward behind the right wrist. Back heel spins down, sweeping the arms up for Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. We're not here long, just enough to feel a nice stretch in that back hip. Heading down through a lunge, stepping it back through plank and lowering Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, Downward Dog. Ready for the other side, left foot steps forward behind the left wrist, back heel spins down, sweep the arms up. Heading down through lunge, back through plank, lowering, shattering. Inhaling up. And exhale, downward dog or child's pose. Few deep breaths. And send the feet forward all the way to the top. Inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Heels and toes together. Bend the knees deeply, sweeping the arms for Utkatasana, powerful pose. And standing tall to mountain pose. Tadasana. Heading into Rikshasana tree pose. So a nice balanced posture. Let's transfer the weight onto the left foot, right knee tips out to the side. And then, first of all, rooting through that supporting foot. So we don't want it turning out or turning in, but straight ahead. And placing the, this leg. The foot goes either below the knee or above the knee. There's like that nice, perfect little notch there where we feel like I could just set it right there. But we don't want to do that. It's not good for the joint. So if you want to lift it higher, pick up the foot, place it on the inner thigh. Let's bring the hands to heart center. So we don't want a sassy stand because that's harder to balance. But rather lift up nice and tall. And if you're like, but my foot keeps slipping, one of the tricks is just press your foot into the thigh. Just squish it right in there. And that will keep it up. Belly scooping in and lifting up tall. So we're thinking of dual energy, pressing down into that supporting foot as the top of the head lifts up high to the sky. And if you're falling over, the hardest part about this pose is to not feel frustrated. It's actually beneficial to wobble a little, right? We're, when you think about it, all those muscles are working really hard to keep you upright. So your ankle's even getting stronger. That's why I love yoga. Tiny little muscles getting stronger. And if you fall out, just get right back in. Almost done. And release. Shaking or rolling up that supporting leg. Preparing for the other side, we'll transfer all that weight onto the right foot. This time, left knee tips up to the side. And same thing again, either below the knee or above the knee, try to do whichever version you did on the first side so that we're not lopsided now. Here we go. Bringing the hands to heart center. Belly scooping in. Shoulders down, remembering that dual energy. So press 
down into the floor and then lift high to the sky. One of the things that helps me find balance, not right now, of course, but like normally, is actually thinking about if you if you think about just lifting through the crown of the head, that doesn't help me with balance so much as if I think, you might even be able to see this physically. If I think lifting with a string, this is me lifting with a string, wobbling quite a little bit, but if I think push my crown of the head and it's actually touching the ceiling, it just feels so much more sturdy. So think about that. So you're pressing the supporting foot down into the floor, like it's pushing down. And then the top of the head is actually touching the ceiling, it's pressing up. And it is a little bit easier to balance. Almost done. Hopefully you can feel the ankle and the glutes working, the hamstrings working, maybe even the calf. And then slowly release, shaking or rolling it out. All right. From here, instead of doing a traditional vinyasa, let's just go right into the next posture. There's vinyasa yoga classes, which I love. It keeps me warm. Um, but there's also just go into the next pose. So we'll do that today. Stepping the feet apart, but one leg's length apart. We'll tip the right toes out to the side. Left toes tip in just slightly. And then heading into Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, bending through that right leg, arms in a T position, palms facing down, and then look beyond the front fingertips, bending deep. You can kind of scooch your feet a little wider if you need a wider stance, and even check your own alignment. There's often a tendency to lean forward or back, so you can actually just look. Am I leaning forward? Am I leaning back? And then once you're super square, then looking beyond the front fingertips, breathing deep. We're supposed to keep breathing like the whole time. The other thing energetically that I'm doing is trying to turn my knee out away from the front of my mat or away from the big toe. So towards the pinky toe, getting that external rotation of the thigh bone and then come on up relax we'll just do a flippy flip to the other side so now left toes turn out right toes turn in and arms in a t bending that front knee same thing so i'm checking is my spine in alignment shoulders right over top of the hips once they are bending deep and thinking of that knee turning out 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 so not actually on the edge of the foot, but towards the pinky toe side, looking beyond the front fingertips. And come on up, relax a little bit. The next pose is Uttita Parjva Konasana, extended side angle. So we just flip you flip again for the right side. We start in warrior two for side angle. You might want to block here. From warrior two, I always like to do a little inhale to lengthen. On the exhale, place the right hand eventually on the outside of the front foot as the top arm lengthens. If you need the hand on the inside, that's okay too. All good. Eventually it's on the outside. And we're trying to get a straight line from the fingertips to the heel. Breathing deep. If it's okay on your neck, looking up towards those top fingers. To come out, we come back through warrior two. Ooh. Sound effects are okay. And flip to flip. So starting through warrior two, that was me discreetly cracking my hip. Okay, not discreetly. Warrior two, we start. I'm preparing for Utitu, Parjva Konasana on the second side. So extended side angle. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, placing that left hand down to 
block or the floor. Right arm sweeps up and trying to find a straight line. So hips are down. And then if it's okay on your neck, looking up to those fingers. Breathing deep. Come out, belly scoops in, coming back through warrior two, and release, relax. The next posture is Uttita Trikonasana, triangle pose. So same thing, we'll flip, flip back to that first direction again. This stance isn't quite as wide. It's like yay distance apart, like three feet-ish. And then, Heel to arch alignment, arms in a T. From here, actually, I'm going to scooch this way. I'm in a bit of a smaller space. From here, the first step is reaching like you're reaching along a shelf. Reaching, reaching, reaching. So the arm is parallel to the floor. And then when you can reach no more, place that bottom hand right onto the shin, not on the knee, or maybe the upper thigh but don't let it dangle in space. That's actually really bad for your back. So place some weight into that bottom arm. Belly scoops in, lengthening through the spine. And then your arm, as you get more flexible, you can go down to your ankle, and eventually the palm is flat onto the floor on the outside of that foot. And there's still weight into it, pressing down into it. Breathing deep. Holding this one just a little bit longer than the others because I like this pose. I don't know what the book says, but I like this pose. Belly scoops in. Come on all the way up. Doesn't that feel amazing after? It's such a great stretch on the inseam of that front leg. And then we'll flip the flip either side. So once again, it's not a super wide stance, but like a like yay distance apart, you know? That's a formal measurement. Here we go. Other side. So toes, left toes tipping straight ahead onto your mat. And then first of all, reaching, reaching, reaching until you feel that really nice stretch on the inseam of the leg. And then tipping, tipping, tipping. Placing some weight into the leg. And if it's okay on your neck, looking up to that top hand. And as you get more flexibility, the hand just moves down the leg, breathing and enjoying. And we scoop the belly in. Come on all the way up and release the pose. The next one is another balance posture, Garudasana Eagle Pose. This one is, well, I can talk about it or we can just do it. So let's just go ahead and do this pose. The left foot is our supporting foot, and it is straight ahead. So I know I'm a bit askew on my mat because I'm trying to face you directly. But if you're facing forward on your mat, it's completely forward. There's a tendency to turn it in to help your other leg. And safety-wise, I suppose that's a little bit OK. Uh, but we really want to have that supporting leg straight. So if available, just keep it totally straight. Then the right leg moves on top, and if available, we get the foot behind the lower leg, and you tend to fly a little bit like an eagle. So the thing about this one is we want to be cautious of the knees. Um, right now, both my knees are twerking inwards, and that's not what we're supposed to do. So now I'm going to press into the pinky toe side of my supporting foot, pressing it in. And it's actually the top leg that's internally rotating like crazy. The bottom leg is parallel. Then, reaching the arms forward, left arm underneath, wrap them and just ravel them right up as far as they'll go. Wherever you get stuck, just hold and smile. 
And if you fall, get right back in. There we go. And hold on to it. This one's kind of hard for balance because your arms are right in front of you where you need to look at something for a focal point. So just try to feel inward where your balance is. And slowly come on out. What I mean by that is you can actually balance with your eyes closed. If you really have a good mind-body connection, you can feel the weight as it distributes onto that supporting foot, right? If you feel moving towards the greater toe a little too much, then shift the weight back. If it moves towards the pinky toe too much, shifting it back. So that's a fairly advanced concept for, for balance, but it really does work. It just takes a lot of practice. So heading into the other side, transferring that weight onto the right foot, left leg circles around, finding that balance. Try not to make weird faces like I am. And then this time we have the right arm, I mean the left arm underneath, and then wrapping them all the way around. Feeling that supporting foot. So try to get that weight towards the pinky toe to keep the knee in good alignment. If you fall out, get right back in. Whoosh. And then unraveling and unwinding. Okay, that's not my favorite pose. Mark Stevens, I don't like that one very much, but it's a good one. Let's move into Parjvottanasana, which I love. So for this one, starting with your right foot forward, left foot back. Now this one is an even smaller stance. So it's not a very long stance at all. And for this one, so if you're square on your mat, which I am right now, eventually you could have a heel to heel alignment, but a little secret is if you step your front foot out a little bit, especially if you have wider hips, I, I like to have my feet a little bit wider apart just to give my hips some space. Then the arms go behind your back. So either clasping onto the elbows or the wrists, or if available in a full reverse namaskar. Okay. So whatever's available and you can, you don't have to scrunch your face, I think. Uh, mine just seems to naturally do that as I awkwardly get my hands up. There we, there we go, between the shoulder blades. So setting those feet once again. And then from here, there's a tendency to curve and round. We want to open the arms and it actually is a good wrist stretch as well. Opening up through the shoulders on an inhale lengthening on an exhale, the right hip continuously pulls back, pulls back. So we don't want to tip forward like this. Right hip pulls back and your spine is long and straight. It's like you're doing a sun salutation. That is how square our torso is. Breathing deep. So maybe you're only folding forward a little bit. Maybe you're folding forward a lot of it. Either way, we're completely square. There's a tendency to open up to the left side. So thinking about the left side of your body rotating to face completely to the floor. Last deep breath here. And then come on all the way up. You can release your arms in between sides, or if you're like, no way, I took a lot of effort getting there, just keep them there. And then we'll flip de flip. So this time, left foot is forward, right foot is back, but I want to open up that stance a little bit, a little, little modification that really helps my practice. Then I inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold it forward. So nice and square. My left hip is pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, breathing deep. And slowly, slowly come on all the way up and release. And we can release the arms now nice and slow because that's kind of a big stretch for the arms. Take a moment, kind of shake it out a little bit. From here, 
We'll do a little flow just to warm up. So a little like a half of a sun salutation A. Coming up to the top of your mat with heels and toes together. Inhale, arms go up. On the exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, heading back through plank, belly scooping in, and lower chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Taking just a moment here, feeling that length in the backs of the legs. From here, right foot steps forward, back heel stays up high to the sky, heading into and preparing for Ashtachandrasana, crescent pose, so belly scoops in, sweep the arms up, bending through that front leg. One thing I really like to focus on is using the glutes, both sides. The back leg glute is kind of easy to access, you just squeeze it. But the front leg side, our quads like to take over. So one thing you can do is, as Mark Stevens says, Padabana, lift the toes, press the heel down into the floor just to get it activated. You know, your quads have to work a little bit, of course, but trying to get the glute fired up. And then the back leg isn't just kind of blue, blue, like it's lifted and active. Let's bring your hands to heart center, bending through that front leg. From here, let's go into crescent pose with twist. So elbow over the knee, and then palms together, and spinning the heart open to the sky. Belly scoops in as we float all the way back up. And then we'll head down through lunge. And from here, step it back to down dog, or if you want to do a full vinyasa, feel free to do so. If you know what that is and you love it, go ahead and we'll all meet together in downward facing dog. And if you're in down dog, maybe walking out a little bit, or maybe even a child's pose. If you're like, I need a little break. Child's pose is always available. From here, the left foot steps forward for Ashtachandrasana, crescent pose. Back heel stays up, high to the sky. Belly scoops in, sweep the arms up. You can bring them to heart center. And from here, same thing again. So trying to use that left glute by pressing down into that front heel. Back leg is lifted, breathing deep. Heading into crescent pose with a twist, right elbow over left knee. I like to release the hands first because it gets me a little bit deeper into it. And then opening up the heart towards the sky. Still thinking about that back leg, keeping it active. Belly scoops in, come on all the way up. Same choices again, down through lunge, stepping it back to downward dog or child's pose, or if you prefer a full vinyasa. From here, let's all meet in a balasana child's pose. Your choice of arms. And a soft bend, especially with every exhale, relaxing into it. And from here, come on up, we'll prepare for Shalabhasana, Locust Pose. So coming all the way onto your belly. Feet are together. Step one, 
straightening through the legs. Your knees might come up off the floor, but the backs of the feet, the tops of the feet, I should say, are on the floor still. And then arms along your sides, palms facing up. From here, shoulder blades squeeze together and down the back, and the legs squeeze together so much that they lift up off the floor a little bit maybe. Not bending the knees, but the legs stay straight. And the arms are reaching for the back wall with your wings, locust wings. Holding, breathing. This should feel really hard. If it doesn't, squeeze more. And release. From here, let's press up and back once again to a child's pose. Okay, from here, we'll head all the way onto our backs and prepare for bridge pose. Step two, one, the Saravangasana. So laying all the way onto your backs, we'll bend the knees, place the feet on the floor, slightly wider than hips width apart and parallel, arms along your sides, palms facing down looking straight up to the sky. From here, the head doesn't move, it stays straight. Press into the feet as you lift the hips high to the sky. Holding here. We're trying to keep the femurs or the, the thigh bones parallel, so we don't want them to splay out to the sides. So just a little bit pressing the knees in towards each other, not mega, but just a little bit, just to keep everything active. The glutes are working, but the more the glutes work, the more the knees want to tip out to the sides. So you need to do both. Use the glutes and then draw the knees in and try to create as much space between yourself and the floor as possible. If you want to go further, interlace the fingers beneath you and gently, carefully shrug the shoulders beneath you, creating a lot of space between yourself and the floor. And holding here. To come out, release the arms and slowly lower the hips all the way down to the floor. And then hug the knees into your chest. Wrap your arms around those legs for a little hug for Apanasana. Knees to chest pose if you feel like rocking side to side. I always do. It feels nice. From here, we'll head into a one-legged twist. So we'll extend the right leg down to the ground. And the right knee is hugged in towards the chest. From here, I have to scooch a little bit because I don't have very much room. From here, we'll send the right knee over to the left, but at the same time, we want to shift the hips back towards midline. So I like to do a little bend of that supporting leg, then shift. It's like a little shift and scooch. So we shift and then extend the leg and allow the knee to lower down towards a block or the floor. But it's really important to keep the shoulder down securely on the ground. Otherwise, we're twisting a, a not good part of the back. So this one, this really ensures that you are getting that mid back to twist, not the low back. And we hold just a few deep breaths here. This one's called Supta Parivartanasana. Climb revolved pose. And scooping the belly in, press the low back into the floor, and we'll square everything up and prepare for the other side. So this time we hug the left knee in, 
The right leg will extend, but you might want to bend it just to help you with the lift and scooch. So that left knee is hugged in, arms in a T. Send the hips over to the left as the top knee moves over to the right. This gets your back in a nice neutral position, really pressing down that left shoulder to the ground. It doesn't want to stay there, but make sure it does. And belly scoops in, press the low back into the floor, squaring everything up, and then we'll hug the knees in once again, nice little hug, up and asana. From here, preparing for a figure four stretch. From here, if you're quite tight on the hips, it's nice to start with both feet on the floor, cross your right ankle over the left knee, and if that's enough of a stretch, just hold here. If you're looking for more of a stretch, then bend the bottom knee in towards you. And you can sort of loop through this way, or if you're looking for more stretch, you can loop through the top, over top. And breathing deep. And release from the other side. So same thing again, feet to the floor. Left ankle crosses over right knee. If that's enough of a stretch, just remain here. For a greater stretch, hug that right knee in. And slowly release. From here, we'll roll over to the right side. Pause for just a moment before we come up to seated. Whenever you're ready, we'll press up to seated. Four, one of my least favorite poses in existence in all of yoga. It's called the dasana. It means staff pose. We're basically in it right now. I don't like this one. So the feet are forward. How's that for marketing for yoga? I don't like it. My face gets all scrunchy. So what we do is we lift up nice and tall. See, it seems, seems good. But then you place your hands beside you. Now, arm length. I just want to talk about arm length for a second. So if you have very long arms, your arms might be bent. And that's okay. Just press into the floor. Uh, most of us have your palms flat on the floor and it's like your arms are perfect length to your torso length and um, if you've got T-Rex arms like Carla, um, I can't reach the floor. So huh, they reach and it's said that it could be just shoulder lack of shoulder mobility. So for some of you, if you're like, well, my palms are really close, but they're not quite, possibly if your trapezius muscles relax a bit, you can press like down, but that's not the case for Carla and it's okay because it doesn't matter if you can't do a pose, you smile anyways, because um, it's yoga and we love yoga. So lifting up tall in Dandasana staff pose, Okay, that's enough of that. It just feels awkward when your hands don't reach. Does anyone else have this issue? So from here, moving on to Paschimottanasana, which is a forward fold, a seated forward fold. Most important thing, and this is one thing that Mark Stevens talks about a lot, and I just, I love his attention to safety and anatomy. He has such a deep understanding of anatomy. Oftentimes, and I've been told this too in class before I became a yoga teacher, to pull the flesh of the buttocks away so you can feel the sit bones on the floor 
but this is a no-no. I'll explain why in a second. So what we want to do, if anything, is almost like lift up and get yourself fully on the squish. That's maybe not the most elegant way of saying it, but you all know what I mean when I say that, right? On the squish. Then we lift up tall on an inhale, and on the exhale, we reach forward for those toes. Now, what happens is if you were to pull the flesh away, if you think of my hands representing your hamstrings, tendons, so your muscles have to attach to the bone somehow, right? They attach with tendons. Now, if you pull the flesh of the buttocks away, you're actually causing the tendons to skew. And then you add more tension by forward folding. Now the innermost hamstrings tendons are liable to hurt, to, to have little tears away from the bone. And that is a very common yoga injury, that high, high leg pain, low butt pain. And often it's just an alignment issue, right? It could be just that people who get that type of pain are doing that. And, and just simply by allowing your muscles to lengthen in an anatomically correct way, can solve so many problems. So this is why I so much really appreciate all the work that Mark Stevens has done. And he's created all these books available for yoga teachers. So if you're a yoga teacher, I recommend all of his books, worth your weight in gold. They're actually very economical as well. From here, slowly come on all the way up. And we'll prepare for our wide-legged seated forward fold. Same thing applies with the pulling away of this. We don't want to do that. Step the feet apart. Not as far as they'll go if you're very flexible. If you're very flexible, it's not a full split. So this is a wide V. Most of us, though, we're like, oh, it's a struggle just to get the feet into a wide V. So if that's the case for you, then that's perfect. You're doing it properly. Lifting up nice and tall, if it's a struggle to stay upright, feel free to have the hands behind you lifting up nice and tall. We're aiming for a bit of a stretch in the adductors, the inseams of the legs. And then reaching forward, we're aiming for the outsides of the feet eventually. And then eventually, chin to the floor. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Either way, you can close the eyes and visualize that happening. And it's quite amazing how the muscles will relax and you'll go a lot further if you imagine and envision the posture in its full variation than you will if you say, forget it, never going to happen. True story. Slowly, slowly, come on all the way up. And then bring the feet. Let's come all the way into a Dandasana staff pose once again, just to kind of complete the posture, even though I don't like this pose. Um, but you'll always notice, sneaky, you'll notice whenever I do Dandasana, I don't usually even use my hands. I should be, though, like really, you're supposed to. I'm going to. I will. From here, we'll head into Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. So bend the knees, soles of the feet together, and allow the knees to tip out to the sides. On an inhale, lifting up nice and tall. On the exhale, the heart melts forward, lengthening nice and smooth. Props are really nice to have in your yoga practice. If your knees are not enjoying this, try placing a block beneath the knee that isn't feeling so super. In that case, I, I really like having both knees at the same angle, even if one of them isn't injured. Uh, it just It's helpful, I think, to the body to be symmetrical. And if that still doesn't help, then just avoid anything where there's sharp pain in the joint, not okay. So just come on out and just wait for the next posture. Otherwise, softening and melting. And slowly start to come all the way up, returning to Dandasana staff pose with the arms and everything. From here, we'll prepare for Gomukhasana cow face pose. 
So to do this one, there's a few different ways you can get into this posture. What's the funnest way? Let's come to our hands and knees. Most of us need a block uh, to sit on or something, a pillow, a cushion, a blanket, something that's quite elevated. So from here, from hands and knees, bring the left leg all the way behind the right. Okay, all the way behind the right. And then step the feet apart and sit back onto your block. And if that's not high enough, get a second block. And if you are quite flexible, you can kind of squiggle your knees together and then readjust so that your one knee is right on top of the other and lifting up nice and tall. From here, there's arms. So I don't like hate this one, but um, it's not my favorite. I think it's to do with the length of my arms, but I don't know. Right arm goes up, sending it back. Left arm goes back, sending it up. So, yeah, you don't have to be graceful. This is why I love yoga. I wasn't the best at ballet on account of my lack of grace. They didn't like my sound effects in ballet so much. So we're trying to find your fingertips behind you. You can use a strap for this one or like the bottom part of your shirt or just hold. We won't hold this one for too, too long to come out. Even though we weren't there for very long, my shoulders are really tight. So I like to come out really, 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 really slowly. Make my arms look like a bird for just a moment. And then things are like, oh, okay, there we go. Blood flow. We need to get ourselves out of this and onto the other side. So belly scoops in, heading forward through hands and knees. I like to do a little down dog in between just to kind of get some blood flow to the legs. Maybe walk them out a little bit. And then once again, hands and knees, this time right leg crossing all the way, whoopsie, behind the left. I was gonna face you for this one and smile. And then sitting back onto your block, shifting as you need to. And then this time the left arm goes up high to the sky, sending it back. And then the right arm goes back, sending it up. And if you're right-handed, this one will most likely be a bit of a struggle in comparison to the other side. Often our dominant arm is just not as flexible and stronger. And then slowly, slowly, slowly release. Come on out, belly scoops in, we'll head forward. Take your time and then when you're ready, pressing up and back to a downward facing dog. Maybe walking it out, it's our last downward dog of the whole day. And then lowering through hands and knees, preparing for Viparita Karani, which is legs up the wall pose. Such a nice one. So for this one, laying on your right side, you're gonna find yourself a wall and just scooch up against it as much as you can. And then you roll onto your back and reach your feet up. And this is the pose, it's called legs up the wall pose. And it's fantastic. If you find that you're too close to the wall, like if it's a big stretch, then you can just kind of like scooch away from the wall. It's a little bit challenging to move once you're in. I think my hips aren't close enough to the wall. There we go. It's just extra, extra points if you have to squiggle. <laughs> and then just hold, hold here. I like to bring my arms to the sides, palms facing up, and then just hold. Even closing the eyes. This is a really good restorative posture. Really good for the lymphatic system too. If you ever have edema in your legs, which is just that sort of water weight. And it allows all the lymph to drain. 
and it reverses blood flow towards the heart, healthy for so many of the systems of the body. If your feet start to tingle, that's totally safe. You can sort of move them around, a couple little circles. And if it ever feels too uncomfortable, you can for sure come out early. This is one of those postures that we often start doing this posture for maybe one minute or two minutes. And eventually we can work our way up to like 20 minutes just sitting here. Um, but often the body's like, what are you doing? I don't like being upside down. I'm not used to it at first. So it's nice to do things gradual for the body. We won't be here too, too long today. Just long enough to really enjoy the benefits. And to come out, bending the knees and rolling onto the right side. Just give your body a moment on that right side. From here, we'll prepare for Shavasana. So if you have the space, you could just roll onto your back, but I don't. So I'm going to move and shift and you're welcome to as well. Maybe you'd like to put on a sweater or some socks or whatever you need to feel cozy. And when you're ready, laying all the way onto your back. And if your back needs a little extra support today, feel free to keep those knees bent with the feet on the floor, allowing the knees to tip in towards each other. Otherwise, extend the legs and the arms as well, along your sides, palms facing up. And close the eyes. Softening everything, everything. But especially through the neck. And the shoulders. And all the way down the arm. Letting the fingers softly curl. Softening through the face. Softening around the eyes. And even the muscle between the eyes. Just letting it all go. And starting to come back, wiggle the fingers and the toes, and gently roll your head from side to side, reaching your arms above head on the floor, give yourself a big stretch, feeling totally refreshed. Then bend your knees in one at a time. And gently roll over to your right side, pausing for a few moments. And slowly start to press yourself all the way up to a comfortable seated position. Palms facing up on the knees. Inhale, sitting up tall. On the exhale, softly close the eyes. Taking those final moments to silently thank someone who's been really helpful to you. 
sending them a little thought, a little prayer. And slowly open the eyes. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today in Mark Stevens' sequence number six. I'll see you next time. Have a really good rest of your day.